Hello, I'm Rick Steiner. Welcome back to Lux Life Discovered. My guest today is Dylan Samways, and Dylan, we're glad to have you with us today. Hey, Rick. Thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. Well, good, good. And people will notice immediately we have a little accent here, a little British accent. So tell me a little bit about where you're from, and let's just start from there. How's that? Brilliant. So I was born just outside of London in a small village called Cookham. And then when I was three, we moved to the States. So my mum, dad and sister for my dad's job. And that was two years, but turned into 16 years. Uh, and then recently in September, I've moved back to London for university just to see how different it is to live in the States and in the UK. <laughs> okay. So in your accent, I mean, it's really amazing. You, it's been that strong over the years because you were in, in Texas. So it's not like you were exactly, yeah. in, I mean, you were in the deep South with the Southern draws and everything. Yeah, it's funny because when I'm back in the States, all of my mates say I sound really English. And even like mum and dad say I sound a little bit English, but a little bit American. And then whenever I come here, all of my mates say I sound really American. And then they say I don't sound English at all. Oh, really? I That's can't interesting. Yeah. Anything. <laughs> So you really just have a unique perspective on things and a unique accent then. Definitely, definitely. And it, I feel like it changes as well, because when I go back, it sort of fluctuates a little bit, depending on who I'm hanging around. Uh, and then same when I'm over here. Sure, yeah. So what has, okay, that's one thing that I did want to cover with you too, after living in the States for 16 years, because you're 19 now, I think, right? Correct, yeah. And um, so what has it been like being back for university in, in England after being in the States for so long? Uh, it's definitely different than I thought it would be because we used to come back to England. Uh, we try to go at least once a year for holiday. And that's all I'd imagined England as. So when we came back, I was like, oh, it would just be like a long holiday. And it's definitely not that. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a lot more expensive than I thought it was going to be. And the weather uh, still isn't as nice as I hoped it would be. But uh, yeah, it's good fun. It's nice to see a different city as well. Because uh, normally when we'd come on holiday, we'd be seeing grandparents. But now, since I'm living in London, it's nice to be able to go into the actual city and have walk arounds and things. Okay, good, good. And then you and I connected because of your, one of the businesses you have, your social media manager, correct? Correct, yeah. So... I started this little venture you could call in uh, October and that's social media marketing and managing. And I, I, one day I just realized how much time I was spending on social media. I was like, oh, surely I could do something with this to make it more productive. Uh, and then, yeah, that's where everything turned really. So then I started, I, I bought a course and I said, look, I, I don't know where I am or what to start with, but I want to learn how to do this. Uh, and then it started off with just outreaching to local people, local businesses who are close to London and Wembley. And then it was, oh, you know, we could diversify a little bit and go more into the States because uh, that's where I'll spend five to six months of the year when I'm back on holiday. And then we could go to other places in the UK because that's where grandparents and family live as well. Okay. How, how, what, starting something like that, especially now, I mean, that is a, a good business and a lot of people are being successful with that. What has been your biggest challenge so far and the biggest reward, would you say? So my biggest challenge, I think, is finding uh, the work-life balance. So I've been really devoted to this and it normally starts with working on the business in the morning before lectures, then going to my lectures, then coming home and just working on my business. So I haven't really done much with my mates. So that's been the hardest struggle, I think, and it's something I'll have to work on for next year. Um, and the biggest benefit, I guess, or winning was probably when I signed that first client and it was like, whoa, like everything I have done is starting to pay off now. Yeah. And uh, just realizing what I could do better each time. That's all, that's my best winning, I'd say. Well, good. What has been the, uh, the response from people when you've approached them about about this because it's still in a lot of ways it's new to, to it's not it's new to people that have never used it before i mean it's not a new concept but there are a lot of people that still not ever turn their social media over to someone so what 
what kind of response are you responses are you getting and uh well it definitely varies so i hadn't really niched down in the beginning it was sort of just sending out as many messages as i could and i would get some back that would say oh never heard of this really interested uh could we jump on a call and i'd be like oh brilliant you're like ahead of me i'd love to get on a call we could just talk more uh and then some people are like uh no thank you i don't want this at all and i guess that's because Uh, like I send all my messages out through social media. So I think some people find it difficult to realize what is actually true and what is like fake. Right. So explain like how you do your particular business, because once a client signs with you, what was the process then? Uh, so we'll do about, it's about one to two days and that's all the onboarding. So we decide exactly how many posts for the month we'll do, uh, what the style is, uh, and then we'll set up a Google Drive or a folder where you could dump in all of your photos for the month. Uh, and we'll normally call it like approved social media photos. And then I can go in there and choose which ones I want to use for each different post. Um, and then we'll go about and say, look, we're going to do a post every two days. Uh, but not on the weekend. So we'll do a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then the weekends will take off. And then depending on where the client is in the world, uh, depends on when we'll post. So usually we try and post at about six to eight in the morning. So obviously that's easy when it's a client from the UK, but then when that's a client from the States, it's like, oh, okay, so the time change, I need to post this as I'm having lunch. But uh, yeah, that's where we really get started. And then we usually change things a little bit each month. So we'll have a monthly analytics report uh, where we just have a call to catch up, but also to say, look, we started from here and now we're up here. Uh, and that helps us guide what we need to do each month. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, because the time of the posting is big as far as knowing when more people are on in that market. So how did, that's something I didn't realize until, you know, after doing this for a while. But yeah, it's, it's like 9 a.m. is a good time for posting here in the States. I don't know why that's a exactly. time, but yeah. So um, yeah, so there's a lot that goes into it. that most people don't realize as far as the research and There definitely is, yeah. definitely. And it goes from anything from picking the right photos, posting at the right time. Uh, and then there's even smaller things, like you think about the caption and the hashtag. So what sounds professional enough, but also isn't like really cringy when somebody's reading it out. That's something that definitely takes a lot of time. Um, but yeah, it's nice because my the first client who I did sign uh, was very open to letting me just do everything. And then my second client was more, you know what, actually, I would like to do things more this way. So it was about finding that balance of what captions and posts work best for you, but also work well for me to put out. So, uh, yeah, there's definitely a lot of little things that go into it. And it's all customized to your particular client too, right? Exactly, exactly. Anything from the package to the post to the caption to the hashtag You could tell me and give me suggestions of what you might like. And I can say, look, that will work brilliant. That's actually a better idea than I thought. Or I could say, actually, I think we should do this because of X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Are they pretty receptive to your input? I guess, I mean, if they're signing with you, I'm sure they are. So, yeah. Yeah, I would say they definitely are. I found that some of the first client I signed was an electrician and he was all about, look, I'll send you the photos. I don't know what I'm doing, so you just do it all. <laughs> oh, brilliant, that makes it much easier for me. Uh, and then the second client was an event planner and she was much more, um, you could say, uh, she had much more of an attention to detail right. and was like, oh, I'd like to do things this way. And oh, we could try your way, but then I think we should go back to doing it this way. It's like, you know what? Whatever you'd like, we can do. Yeah. So do you do a combination where like the client can post some and then you post some or do you do it all? So we try to just do it all ourselves right. because when I do half and let's say you do half of the posting for the month, it makes it a bit difficult in the sense of organizing and planning because then I've got to make the post, send it back over to you and say, you need to post this at six in the morning, your time. 
Uh, and then I'll make sure I post the story at nine o'clock that time, reflecting the post. So it just gets a little bit confusing. And some people have said, well, uh, if I've quoted them, say, for eight posts for the month, so they'll say, uh, could we do four each? So then we can half the price. And it's I find it more difficult to do that. So it's like, ah, oh, let's just find a balance and we'll find a price that works for you. And maybe we do a few less posts, but the price is better working for you. Well, and, I, and also you keep the post um, with a great, a better sense of continuity too. They're not such a difference in the posts that are made and keeps everything more fluid. Exactly, exactly. It's more lookalike rather than one post that's one style and then you go to the next post and it's like, oh, this looks like somebody completely different has came up with this idea. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So where do, where do you see this like headed? I mean, because there's, there's a lot of possibilities with what you're doing. There definitely are. There definitely are. So there's massive names who have done similar things such as digital marketing, such as Eamon Gutsy and Adam Welsh. Um, and they're of it, they're both like multimillionaires. Um, but I guess the for me right now, uh the dream or the passion would be just to make enough money to keep going through university. And then I would like to do this as my full time job after university. But I'm trying not to jump ahead of myself because I think if I keep looking at what the future might hold, I'll miss out on loads of the things that the present time is going to give me. Right. And being the age you are and, and being in university, I mean, you're and so involved in social media, you're going to have access to a lot of things and see things developing that other people that aren't in it all the time may not see or see as quickly. Oh, exactly. Exactly. I'm reading this book at the moment called The Young Entrepreneur. And it talks all about how like the younger generation really need to start like thinking outside the box and how we use social media all the time, but we never do anything with it. So it's like a perfect example of social media marketing at such a young age. Yeah. Well, you know, I, um, of course, it's going to sound like I was stone ages, but I um, remember when the internet even came about and thinking when it first started, that's, that's crazy. Who's going to use that? And now, Yeah. you know, it's like with our smartphones, everything else, it's like, how would we exist if we didn't have it? It's amazing how Exactly. It's like everybody more uses sense. it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. More ways than you even realize sometimes, you, you know, it's like, it's just part of our life. Our, like my grandchildren or my six-year-old granddaughter, it's amazing what she can do with a smartphone. And Oh, it's it's not like incredible. we've sat down and taught her that. It's just, they just learn. It's just amazing how quickly. Yeah. And especially when you go out for like tea now, like I remember at Christmas when I was back home in Dallas, we went out for a family meal and you look around and everybody under the age of like six years old is just on somebody's phone at the table. It's like, wow, like where'd you learn to do that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and all the games. I mean, like my granddaughter can get so frustrated with me because I can't find what we're looking for. And she'll take my phone and she can be on that site in no time. I'm like, how did, how did you do that? How do you know that? Yeah, yeah. You know, but, Share the secret. Share the secret. Right. So she's having to teach me some things. But, um, but now, so, um, okay, so you're going to, what are you getting your degree in? You. So I'm actually at a football university. So we study inside Wembley Stadium, and my official degree will be international football business. Okay. So it's basically it's business behind the scenes of football teams all around the world. So I, I've always struggled at school. So I thought if I pick a degree that I'm interested in, it will make the time go by easier. And uh, I, I'm looking at this degree just to use the business side of things. So I don't think I want to stay in sport um, just because it's too much of a passion to play and watch. So I think if I included that as my uh, work instead of my hobby, it defeats the purpose of it. Okay, that makes sense. Well, good. Yeah. And plus, like you said, if it's something you're interested in, you're going to put more effort into it and you'll do better. So, yeah. Oh, exactly. Exactly. That's why I like having the social media marketing because it's just so different to anything that I'm learning inside the university. Yeah. But there are a lot of the, like you said, picking up the business aspects of it because that's going to be huge. I mean, you'll use that in every aspect of your life. So that's really, really smart. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Like some of the classes we had this year was contemporary issues in sport. 
but it's not just in sport when you think about it. It's in modern, like modern day, it's in everyday life. And then we had another class, which was managing people and operations. And that's sort of exactly what any business is, because you're going to work with people and you're going to have operations to get to X, Y, and Z. So uh, those two classes have been very beneficial. All right, good. So you're coming back to the States for the summer. So what are your plans when you're back and how long will you be back in the States? So I'll come back May 23rd until about the middle of September. So about five months, I think it is, four and a bit. Um, and we've got a few family holidays booked, which will be nice. But then my plan is to just work loads. So unfortunately, I won't be able to just do the social media marketing at the moment. So I'm either going to go back to the job that I previously had, or I'm looking to try and get an internship at a real estate firm uh, or something along those lines. Okay. All right. So what do you, in your spare time in England, I know you're, how far, you're not too far from London. How far are you No, from London? I'm just about 20 minutes on the tube. So I'm in Wembley, just next to the stadium. So it's literally like 15, 20 minutes on the tube. Okay. So what do you, what's, okay, for a 19 year old to do in England, what, what all do you guys do? Oh, there's loads, there's loads. So I've got a few mates who really enjoy running. So there's a beautiful park called Hyde Park, which we go and have long runs in every now and then. And the amount of people outside is so nice because you just have people saying hello to you, waving at you, which when you're walking around London and the city, you would never, ever see. Um, so that's definitely a good thing. Uh, there's a few goal, like top golf uh, in... Where is it? North Greenwich it is. And you look over the city. So that's a very pretty sight. Uh, and then there's obviously there's a few like night places to go for a night out, which uh, can, be good, can be good fun, but not all the time. <laughs> well, that's that's good. That's good. So, okay, after being in the States for 16 years, back in England for a year, which do you like better? I'll put you on the Well, spot here. yeah, that is a difficult question. I get it asked all the time as well. So I think from, uh, you could say, economical uh, point of view, I would definitely prefer the States because I think there's more possibility and opportunities out there. But then if I'm comparing Texas to the UK, I think the UK is prettier than Texas. So I'd have to say the UK on that front. So it depends what perspective we look at. True, yeah, yeah. Well, you, the UK has all the neat architectural and the history and everything else, and Texas is more rural Exactly. and rustic. So, yeah, I get that. Definitely, Yeah. definitely. And it's a bit more flat in Texas, just loads of concrete buildings. It is definitely flat, that's for sure. Yeah. I um, have been to Dallas and Fort Worth, that area, quite a bit. And um, then we went over farther south down to um, like Harlingen near the border. And um, just amazing the, the diversity of the, the whole area because you went from Oh, the, it's unbelievable. yeah, you're down with the cotton fields and cotton plantations, kind of like what we have in Arkansas, but on a larger scale. Oil wells like crazy, you know, it's just a whole different mindset. That is the And nice part about Texas, is it? You could drive like 45 minutes one way and everything changes. You could drive four hours the other way and it's completely different. Right, right. And a lot of the areas that have snow that most people don't think about Texas having snow, there's areas that get quite a bit of snow and cold weather. Yeah. Yeah. And like you, like you don't get much snow in Dallas, but I remember, I think it was two years ago, my dad went hunting somewhere in Texas. He sent us a photo in the morning. It was like four inches of snow where he was. And it was still like decently warm outside where we were. I was like, whoa, hold on a sec. Where's our snow Oh, coming? right. <laughs> That's like going out to Arizona. You know, you could be in Phoenix and go two hours south or two hours north and your weather is completely, completely different. So. Now that is the best part about the States, though, is you could travel not ridiculously far and have a completely different climate. Well, and then, but then where you are, though, there's so many different countries that are so close together. So a lot of times that what we could travel in the States, you could have already covered like three or four countries. So that's That always is very kind of a neat perspective too, yeah. And you can get the train all the way from London to France. So, and it only takes a few hours, I think. So that crosses off like another country. And then once you're in France, your, your borders with everything, really. Right, right. So it's just a matter of having the time and the resources to go do everything you want to do.
exactly exactly that's always the dream always the dream just need the plan and execution together that's true so what what do you see as your next step with your your business what what do you what would your next goal be to accomplish uh it's a difficult question so i think from uh, a point of view for myself it would be to make that next finan uh, financial benchmark uh, in making X amount a month. Uh, so that's always the next goal. But I think if I could be able to try and get some more employees on board uh, and maybe make this a business that I could do with some of my friends and stuff back from the States who have the same uh, mental mindset as myself, I think that's probably the next goal to try and expand it. Okay. All right. Good deal. Well, I tell you, we're going to put your information on the screen here and you look at it and make sure it's all correct and tell people how to, to reach you and, and um, what you can offer them and just. Brilliant. Well, thanks, Rick. So, uh, yeah, you can email me at samwayssmm at gmail.com or you can find me on Instagram at Dylan underscore Samways. Uh, just send me a message. I'd be happy to set up a call. We can uh, talk more about anything related to social media marketing, your business, whether you should have it on social media or not. Uh, and then, yeah, we can go from there. But any questions, just send either to my email or DM me on Instagram. Okay, excellent. Well, Dylan, thank you for your time today. I appreciate you, you um, staying in this evening because I know you're like six hours.